Welcome to SoCal Prep Report. I am Carlos Pena, and today we have another exciting show with a couple of special guests. So sit back, and we'll be right back. Exploring LA County's trails is now a click away. A mobile-friendly trail locator lets you discover all our county's scenic hikes. It features an interactive map that takes you inside the trail. From the elevation to the temperature, what you need to know is at your fingertips. Wondering if your dog, horse, or bike is welcome? It has that too. So discover some of LA's best kept secrets and happy trails to you. Hello folks and welcome to this week's SoCal Prep Report. I'm Carlos Pena and today I'm coming from All Star Physical Therapy in Apple Valley and my guest, Sandra Kelly, Doctor of Physical Therapy, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you? Good, good. Now, tell us a little bit about yourself and what do you do out here? Well, I'm a doctor of physical therapy. Uh, I graduated from the University of St. Augustine mm -hmm. in 2015, and I've been working ever since then. Wow. Now, up here in, in your office, you, you see a lot of injuries. What are the two major injuries you see out here? Well, depends. We're talking kiddos. Uh, I would say I see a lot of knee injuries, ACL, meniscus, a lot of ankle injuries. Mm -hmm. um, those would be the two major lower extremities. Yeah, I, c I could imagine now, you know, sports. Mm -hmm. My goodness, you know, so many injuries out there. ACL seems to be the biggest one. Why does that happen? Most of the time it happens just because we don't have, uh, we don't teach kids to have the proper technique mm -hmm. with um landing squatting jumping pivoting that sort of thing mm -hmm. a lot of times we think of, of acl injuries occurring from contact sports you know football right but it's more often non-contact um activities that cause an acl tear oh that, that you know that's interesting you non-contact you know what is, so we're talking movement. We're Absolutely. talking something they did wrong. Yeah. It's not just, you you know, football player running down the field, knee hyperextends, get, gets hit, and lands wrong. It's, you know, you're at practice, you doing a drill, you cut one way, and, knee, and, and it goes. Wow. Now, why does that happen? Is it because the muscles around the knee are weak? Or the ligaments, you know, aren't strong? What, what, is it, what happens? It's most of the time, uh, and it happens more often with, with girls mm -hmm. than with boys, um, it's from weakness in your hips, your glute med. Um, with girls, so the muscle, what it does is it keeps your, your pelvis level, mm -hmm. right? So if you don't have strength at the pelvis, when you land, your knee's going to land um, in, say, uh, like a knock knee position, right? right? So knee goes inward, um, and you're, you'll continue kind of going that direction, right? So instead of landing, like when we were you know, younger, teach you feet, shoulder width apart, knees, toes going forward, that right. sort of thing. If you land with your knee going inward and then you try to cut the other way, you're rotating wow. the opposite direction. And yeah. so that's what causes the injury. Wow, so, you know, it's interesting. You know, you, you're talking about from the hips. Mm -hmm. You know, in a recent show, we talked about, you know, the, the hips is, is the focal point of balance and you know for an athlete so understanding that that knee injuries start from the hip that's that's kind of you know i didn't learn that i mean right and we don't always think about it you, you know you my knee hurts must be the knee right you, okay the knee hurts but what caused it mm. you know and so if you've got the weakness at the the hip it can cause problems at the knee mm -hmm. it can cause problems at the ankle so the same weakness in the glute med um, that would cause or make you more susceptible to say a knee injury right. makes you more susceptible to an ankle injury mm -hmm. as well. Wow. I mean, so, so then coaches out there, you know, they, they should probably incorporate some kind of muscle strengthening around the hips. You know, what, what kind of exercises can, can they, uh, are we talking about here? So uh, easy exercise to do, um, at practice requires no equipment and mm -hmm. it's actually how we muscle test the, the hips. You lie on your side, bring your, and just lift your leg. Up side to mm -hmm. side. Kind of like the Jane Fonda. Uh, exactly. I, <laughs> I tell people that all the time. We're going to do their Jane Fondas, but kids don't get it anymore. But absolutely. Yeah, they don't. Do your Jane Fondas. <laughs> yeah, do like the, I don't know, make, make a menage or whatever. I know. It needs to make a, a comeback, and there needs to be another actress that needs to make a comeback with exercise videos so that we'll get that. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, you know, it's all fun and games here, but in real reality, it's, it's a serious issue. It is. It's a serious issue, and, and knee injuries, we got to watch out for that, you know. Um. Golly, you know, 
what else should someone know about preventing injuries? Well, prevention is obviously key, mm -hmm. but just taking some time at the beginning of practice, do a dynamic warm up. Try, mm -hmm. you know, your hip swings. The soccer players have the the gate openers, yeah. gate closers. Loosen up those hips. Mm -hmm. Warm up the muscles nicely. Okay. Work on your strength. You know, incorporate some strength and conditioning into the beginning of your practice and then hit the drills. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it takes maybe 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of practice to get a good warm up and go through right. strengthening. But it's better to do that than to lose mm -hmm. an athlete through this through the rest of the season. Right now, be, going into a warm up, mm -hmm. you know, obviously it's good to get the heart rate going, get the blood going first, you know, mm -hmm. quick lap and then start start going into your stretches. I mean, is that what we want to do? I say I mean the running the lap just get the blood circulating would mm -hmm. be great do some little light jogging you don't want to get too um, too crazy too fast just a right. nice little nice little jog then you know um, I used to always have my kids line up do their hip swings do their butt kickers do mm -hmm. their gate openers things like that just to loosen everything up mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't take long at all, all gets right, the heart yeah. rate up and, and even a warm-up will prevent injuries yeah yeah I see that how long does it take to recover from an ACL injury well, um, I would imagine it depends on a person as well. Depends on the person. Um, depends on how what, what type of, of graft that they do. There's multiple mm -hmm. ways to do it. But before they're back on the field, um, I mean, we're talking sometimes nine months, wow. maybe longer. It, just, it wow. depends. And I would imagine some, some, some people just really never recover. Well, you are more likely to suffer a, a secondary injury mm -hmm. um, than, you know, uh, someone who who doesn't have that type of, of prior surgery. Mm -hmm. And also, if you have to have the surgery, you increase your risk of having arthritis mm -hmm. um, later in right. life. So right. it's gonna, that impact that you have, at, or the surgery that you have to have at, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old wow, is gonna come back in and, you know, you'll see it again yeah, <laughs> as an adult. that's way too young to be having those kind of surgeries. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned earlier girls, you know, they, they, they tend to get a lot more ACL injuries. Is that correct? I mean, why? They do, just as far as more hip weakness, uh, they've, the mechanics between how a, a boy does say a, a pivot or, you know, cutting uh, activity, is mechanically different than a girl does. Mm -hmm. A girl is. Uh, we're shaped slightly different, mm -hmm. so we are already have a little bit more of that, you know, knock knee sort of valgus position in, mm -hmm. in our knee, um, naturally, just structurally. So then you add hip weakness, and we're just we're asking for trouble if we do that. Yeah, so you got to yeah. work on the hips, ladies especially. Yeah. You really, hip strength. And I would imagine you have to start them off very young. It's, it becomes so that becomes something routine to them. Absolutely. You know, it's never too early to do um, you know, strength training. We always think of strength tra training as, you know, going to the gym. No, no doing our Jane no. Fonda's strength training there you, too. There you go. There you <laughs> and go. So it, that's good habit to build in, mm. in athletes and in good practice for coaches to get into. Right, right. Now, um, you know, what, what kind of message do you have, first of all, for those coaches out there? What, what, sh what should they know? Well, you know, I know coaches, you, you have a plan, you have limited time with the kids, right. but, you know, you can work these things into your practice. You know, you have the kids warm up anyway, you, mm -hmm. you know, do their lap and, and everything like that. And you usually want to talk to them at the beginning of practice to, mm -hmm. you know, to say what the plan is. So you can talk to them while they're doing their, their you know, their dynamic warm-ups and right. their strength training, right. that sort of thing. You can talk to them about whatever it is, and kids tend to retain more information little, when they're moving. A little bit of education exactly. as, as they're warming up. Yeah. You know, uh, what about the kids? What should they know? Well, don't uh, – if you're hurt, if you're, if you're injured, mm -hmm. speak up. You know, uh, it happens all too often while, you know – I landed and kind of hurt, but yeah. it, it wasn't that bad. Right. I hear it wasn't that bad. Yeah, a lot of times there's like they say that because they don't want to, you know, mom, dad. Oh, they're going to get mad at me if I say it hurt. Well, and they don't want to disappoint their coaches, mm -hmm. things like that, especially your super competitive kids. They don't yeah. want to disappoint their, their coaches or their teammates. Yeah. But it's better to speak up and say, mm -hmm. okay, this doesn't feel right. Yeah. And, and get it worked on early than, earlier rather than later when you do yeah. have a, a more serious injury. Yeah, you know, like the saying goes, you know, pain is, is the way of, for the body to say something's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Parents. What about parents? Well, parents, they know their kids better than anyone else. They mm -hmm. watch them move. They've been watching them play since however young they started. Mm -hmm. If it looks like, you know, your kiddo's not moving right, if it looks like you just something's not settling right, speak up. Yeah. Don't just, 
You know, oh, well, coach knows. I mean, obviously coaches don't like a huge amount of interference, but if you right. if you feel like your kid's not moving right, you got to speak mm-hmm. up. And don't be afraid to ask the doctor, hey, you know, he hurt his ankle, she hurt his ankle. Um, see the doctor, send him to see us. Right. We can right. always get more on the preventative side of it rather than – post-surgical you side. Know, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Physical therapy, everybody always thinks, well, it's post. You do afterwards. Is physical therapy something that you can do prior to? Is there, you know, uh, I don't know. Can, can they get out there? And... Well, you can. Mm-hmm. We can. You can do prehab. Like, you know, obviously you can do prehab before you have a surgery, but if you have a, a mild ankle sprain and you're not able to do what you need to do, yeah, you can come, always, Come yeah. on in and have yeah. it checked out. It's, you know, it's however your insurance does it, but absolutely, we, <laughs> you know, there's always those hoops to go through, but as far as getting into seeing us, yeah, we, I mean, we see kids, you know, I think the youngest, we have probably like 10 year old, wow. you know, and we see, you know, all Older. the way up, you know, the senior it's a, we yeah. see everyone, and we we can modify it for whatever sport you do right, and, right. and whatever you need to do. Right, definitely. Well, folks, there you have it. You know, hey, coaches, take out your VHS tapes. Get <laughs> out there. You know, learn the Jane Fauna. It starts from the hip, seriously. It, that knee injury start from hip. Everything starts from the hip, from chiropractor to, to uh, physical therapy. Get out there. Make sure those kids out there are doing the right thing and, and warming up and, and the right things. Thank you so much for being on the show. A lot of great information. Thanks folks, time. yeah, of course, of course. For, folks, stay tuned. We have another interview after this. Don't go nowhere. What's happening, LA? I'm Arian Alexander. This weekend is jam packed with all kinds of festival fun. If you love live music, then we've got the perfect festival for you. Echo Park Rising is back for its eighth year to celebrate the music and diversity of the Echo Park community. Multiple stages and activities will be set up on the streets of Sunset Boulevard, Glendale Boulevard, Echo Park Avenue, and more. There will be venues for food and art as well. What a great way to explore the sounds and streets of Echo Park. The event is free for all ages. For the lineup, check out epr.la. It's sizzling at the Long Beach Barbecue Festival this weekend. Celebrate and chow down on all the tasty foods you can only find at a barbecue. Visitors can treat their taste buds with fiery chicken, pulled pork, tri-tips, ribs, sausages, and of course, all the yummy sides. The extravaganza also features live entertainment, arts and crafts, games, and a children's area. There will be plenty of barbecue to eat and even more activities to experience. For tickets, visit longbeachbbqfestival.com. Want to see the stars up close but don't have your own telescope at home? The Griffith Observatory has got you covered at their monthly public star party. Get a glimpse of the moon, constellations, and visible planets through a variety of telescopes. There will be volunteers present to answer questions and discuss whatever you see in the sky. Join the star enthusiasts of Los Angeles at this free event with a whole family. For details, visit GriffithObservatory.org. Whether attending a festival or stargazing with your family, it's sure to be a great weekend. From the streets to the stars above, what's happening in LA has it covered for you. I'm Arian Alexander, and I'll see you next week. So Cal Prep Report brought to you by KM3 Projects. Fighting cancer's tough. We're here to help. Hi, folks. Welcome back to SoCal Prep Report. Again, I'm Carlos Pena, and now my guest here is Jonah Davis, coach extraordinaire. How are you doing, coach? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Awesome, awesome. Now, tell us a little bit about yourself. You've been, you've traveled all over the world coaching soccer. Uh, what are some of the things? What I mean, what have you been up to? Uh, well, I've played a lot in England, semi-pro. Um, you know, coaching a little bit over there as well, and then um, came over here about eight years ago, mm-hmm. and. Started coaching just kind of wreck summer camps, uh, got a good opportunity to work with a good club down in Carlsbad um, and then just basically went on from there and coached a few club teams um, just kind of built up and then uh, took that last year out uh, to be a stay-at-home dad. Stay-at-home dad, dad. congratulations on that <laughs> by the you. way. And, uh, and then now I'm just about to start with a company called Street Smart Soccer. Okay. Um, so very excited about that and the new adventure. Yeah. Now, now the first time I met you, we had you were part of the British 
challenger, yeah, challenger system sports. and you got to come out to the states and do all these various club or uh camps and stuff like that uh what was the difference watching kids from the united states play soccer and you know back back in england i think it was just the the difference in the ability level um like how big the difference was because in england even people that play rugby or cricket mm -hmm. they've still played soccer mm -hmm. a decent amount so they've got a good understanding of the game they've watched it right um in the us you get a lot of kids that come to the summer camps mm -hmm. that have never really even seen a soccer ball before so yeah. that was the big difference was just from the lower level to the higher level mm -hmm. was so much bigger in the us rather than in yeah. england the lower level to the high level is probably a little shorter right you know it, i'm glad you mentioned that you know in the united states we grew up with a baseball, a football, and a basketball. Yeah. Not necessarily a soccer. You know, in Europe, you grow up with a soccer ball yeah. at your feet. You know, uh, I, I, I tend to think that women's soccer in the United States is a little bit more successful because there's not that many professional sports out there, but soccer. Yeah. You know, I mean, how, how does that compare? Um, well, now actually, England and the European teams, I feel like, are really kind of putting the money into mm -hmm. the the female side of it. So. You know the the professional women's soccer but also the lower levels through all the clubs so like manchester city chelsea all the, all those now have the female side with the um you know the the developmental uh teams coming through right. but to, i mean to start with when i first came over it was the us had mm -hmm. so many girls playing soccer and i'd never yeah. seen that before because yeah. when i grew up i mean in school i had there was one girl in the, that could have definitely played in the team, but she wasn't actually really allowed. Yeah. But nobody, no other girls really wanted to play. <laughs> so it was kind of hard on, on that girl. And then when I went to college, it was the same thing. There was only a handful of girls actually wanted to play. Wow. Um, but now, you know, I see a lot where a lot of my friends that I used to go to school with, all their kids, actually, all the girls are uh, going and playing, playing soccer, soccer from a very young age. Wow, so that's, that's nice. That, I mean, yeah, they, it, it makes a difference what ball you grow up with on there. You know, in recent years, we've seen U.S. soccer change. You know, now, you know, it's going from the four phases of, of training. Now we're going back to play, train, play type of thing where it's more like Europe. Um, do you, how, is, is that what we need right now? I mean, are we chasing something or, or do we develop our own thing? Um, well, I think, I think they should take notes from, uh, you know, the good European countries mm -hmm. that are producing World Cup world-class players all the time from a very young age um, for me soccer still in the baby stages mm -hmm. in, in, in the, the in US the, uh, yeah. you know it's, it's gonna take a long time for them to get the right kind of uh, mode of training and mm -hmm. you know what's right at the moment I think it's explored so much that there's a big influx of players that are coming through but do they really love the game are they right. doing it just because it's the popular thing at the right, moment? Right. Um, that to me is is a big thing because in England, you play a sport because you love it, whether it's soccer, rugby, mm -hmm. um, you know, cricket. And I feel like even in the US, a lot of kids, they love football, they love basketball. Yeah. They, and you see the handful of kids that really love soccer, you know, they watch yeah. it all the time, they go, play it all yeah. the time, yeah. um, like your son. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's the big difference is until there's more kids that love the game and yeah. want to watch it all the time and i think that's going to happen in the next couple of generations it's going to be like the parents that have actually played now yeah so when the young kids now when they become parents their kids will want to watch it all the time because right, they're right. watching it the, the yeah. parents will be kicking a ball around with them yeah. all the time so i think that's when the the shift is gonna happen um yeah. i hope so anyway I, I honestly you know in my personal opinion I, you know in the u.s we we have to get away from that trophy kid mentality and the pay to play mentality yeah. the, the kids have to play be you know and let them play you know if they're good they're good if they they really want it they'll practice and keep going yeah. you know we, you don't have that kind of mentality it's in Europe no no we um when I was playing from as a kid from five six years old when I first mm -hmm. started uh, in a club it's all volunteer coaches so it's mm -hmm. all um, it was my friend's dad um, that used to coach us, a guy called Peter Conway. Mm -hmm. He coached us from six years old up to 16 when we wow. then had to go into, you either went into adult soccer or you just kind of 
stop playing. I yeah, just played for fun, whatever. Yeah, go, um, go to the workforce now. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you were good enough, you'd get picked up as a teenager mm-hmm. by one of the big clubs. So, you know, any any club that's a professional club mm-hmm. has um, the academy teams. Yeah. And those players will, will go there. So a, a few of my friends did that. They went mm-hmm. and played for Middlesbrough. They went and played for uh, Leeds. You know, they, they went to these clubs and actually did well for themselves. But yeah. then to go to that next level is very hard. Yeah, you, you have to be careful um, with clubs, academies, because sometimes their their agenda is, is not, hey, you know, the individual player, yeah. it's the team, and we're going to win, 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 when it yeah. should be concentrating on the individual player, develop the player, yeah. and go from there. Uh, you know, academies are coming up. What's your opinion on that? Um, I think soccer is a massive business over here now, mm-hmm. and I think it's just another way of... of making money um i agree in some in some cases that they you know to have a an academy team yeah you know like the big clubs like san diego surf or la galaxy or anything Mm -hmm. like anybody who's affiliated with hopefully a a mls team Mm -hmm. you know where they they could have the progression to go to go into a top team or into a college Mm -hmm. that's brilliant but there's so many of them that just kind of come out of the the ground and then uh, like oh yeah we're, we're now yeah. an academy and yeah. it's you know and it, it, thousands of dollars it, and the money is a big issue yeah it, you know you have tons of kids that can't afford to play those clubs and are great players and it, players. in any sport yeah. baseball football they can't afford it. mom dad can't afford it you know and now you got these clubs and you got to pay a lot of money and the kids are playing there because mom and dad can afford it you know that's we need to change that mentality yeah well, when when I was playing as a kid, there's no way I I come from a what you would call middle, probably middle lower class area of England. We're we're mm-hmm. in the northeast of England, and there's no way my parents would have been able to afford the the kind of money that they're paying here. Yeah. To play a club, um, yeah. you know, it just wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been able That's to do crazy. it at all. Now now switching let's switch this up a little bit. You know, we're, now let's talk about skills. You know, you got to maximize touches on the ball. Yeah. I and mean, I know you're working on on uh, indoor soccer or something like that. That's that's pretty much the same as what you see in uh, Brazil, England. Yeah. What can you tell me about that? And what's what, what are we looking to do here? So the the company that I'm uh, starting to work for now is actually with two really good friends of mine mm-hmm. from down in in San Diego, and it's called Street Smart Soccer. And basically, the premise is that in the U.S., the kids are doing so many sports or so. You know, they have so much on with school, things mm-hmm. like that, that they don't have time to like be like we were as kids where we can get homework done in 30 minutes right. and then be outside for the rest of the night playing soccer in the street with your friends. <laughs> you know, so the lights come on. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you, you, you're constantly in England and Brazil, Argentina, like everywhere like that, kids just go to the streets and they play, yeah. you know, and they'll make up a game, doesn't matter how much space you've got, yeah. and you'll be, you know, you get loads of touches on the ball and... Mm-hmm. And honestly, that's that's where our skill kind of came from. So when you come over here and you you haven't to do it in your practices at club and things like that, it, mm-hmm. you don't get enough time just to play and figure things out. So with street smart soccer, it's it's basically maximising the touches. It's it's all about um, you know small sided games like three v three. But we're going to be playing on like basketball court or, or um, like tarmac yeah. type thing, um, yeah. so that it's it's organised. And they do learn tricks and skills, yeah. like we will be showing them that. But it's also about when they get into the games. They they play a lot of the time well, is playing the games. Tact, know the tactical. Yeah, and it, and, and it's more about them just kind of figuring it out, playing. You know, if you can nutmeg that player, nutmeg them and go around rather right, than right. you know a coach being like, don't do that because yeah. you might lose the ball. You know, and, and from my aspect, you know, my coaching, I try to teach them to understand it, be, be three dimensional. Uh, I see a lot of kids are one-dimensional, two-dimensional, and don't think outside the box and yeah. say, "Well, I can go around this guy a different way." You know, I, uh, you know, you got to maximize touches. That's key. That's yeah. key in soccer. You know, you know, coach. I appreciate you being on the show. A lot of great information. Thank you so awesome. much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. And uh, there you have, it, folks. You know, if you're gonna play soccer, it's not necessarily about the wins, loss columns, or any of that. It's it's the kids having fun with any sport. That's it from here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.